Will you pray with me? Our gracious and almighty God, we come before you this day seeking your word. Help us to listen intently on that word, to hear your voice in the reading of the scripture, in the hearing of your word through the voices of those in our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Several weeks ago, you may recall, I had a bout with vertigo. Um, and prior to that, all my mom's ups and downs and everything. And then I had the accident, and I've been in this process of being broken down. But when I was returning back, um, it, back from my mom's ordeal and the vertigo, had gotten into the pulpit and kind of set aside what I was going to preach on and as many reflected back to me, preached from my heart. And people were pretty enthusiastic about that. And Mike has been encouraging me to get out of the pulpit. But I must remind you that my heart is very small. And I may have expended all that I had that one Sunday. We don't believe it. <sighs> we'll see. So in that, I ask for your patience and your indulgence as I try to move away from the pulpit and um, share with you what is on my heart. So we'll see how this goes. So earlier this week, as I was reading the scripture lesson, um, it's a short story out of Mark. That's what I love about the gospel according to Mark, is that everything is just short. It's right to the point. There's no extra extraneous words that are needed. He just gets right to the heart of it. And in this story that I'll read in a moment, Jesus is a familiar story. Jesus is with the disciples, and he calms the waves and the, wor and the uh, water that's coming over the boat with just a word. And I thought of Caesar Milan. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen the dog whisper, if you've seen the show, the dog whisper, if you've seen Caesar Milan on other shows, that sometimes he ends up as a guest on other shows, and they call him in because they got to work with the dogs and. There'll be a dog just, rah, 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 you know, just rab, and he just walks up, Shh. and the dog just like, whoop. <laughs> so of course I try that at home. <laughs> we have three dogs, and they sometimes get all crazy, especially Grizzly. A leaf blows by the front yard, and he's rah, 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 right, and I'm like, Shh. and he looks at me, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> But I was reminded of that ability that Jesus had to just, in a word sometimes, calm the storms in our lives. So let me read to you from the Gospel according to Mark. I should have marked that. Uh, chapter 4. Good thing it wasn't one of those minor prophets where you're like, what order did that go in? <laughs> um, I'm actually going to begin with verse 1 and then skip to verse 35. Hear the word of God. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves, they obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. 
So at the beginning of this story, in this fourth chapter of Mark, the crowds are getting so large. Jesus has already been about ministry. He's been healing, and he's been teaching, and he's becoming more famous, and the crowds are getting larger and larger and larger. And in these first eight, chaps of Mark, eight chapters of Mark, Jesus has been doing a lot of his ministry around the Sea of Galilee on each shoreline. And so he's there, and he's afraid, and the disciples are afraid that it's going to get so large that they're actually going to crush Jesus. So he instructs the disciples, and he said, let's get in the boats. We'll push out a little bit a ways, knowing about acoustics and whatnot, and gets on that water to start teaching the crowds that have gathered from the water, and they're out on the shorelines. And then, after he teaches some to the crowds... He teaches privately to his disciples in the boat and tries to share with them what the kingdom of heaven is like. And when he's finished, it's nearly nightfall, and he invites them and says, let's go to the other side. He invites them to cross over to the other side. And we can read into this kind of layers of linguistics, what it means to cross over to the other side. What is he really inviting them to do? But in Jesus' style, he's inviting them to cross boundaries. And that's what Jesus was famous for throughout his ministry, crossing boundaries, going to places that no respectable person would go, challenging the authorities, challenging the culture of the day. Jesus crosses many social boundaries, crosses many spiritual boundaries in his ministry. He eats with unsuitable people. He breaks the Sabbath laws. He heals people when you're not supposed to do that. And he hangs out with people who are unclean. He's continually pushing society and their morals and mores. And so he gets in the boat and he asks the disciples to cross over to the other side, to go with him to some place that is unknown to them and might be really unpredictable. And so they go. And it's nightfall and the wind comes up and it becomes a squall out on the lake. And the boat is being tossed. And I think about Jana. I think about the story of you all. It was Lake Mead. Yes. yes. When, you're, when a squall just suddenly came up and you guys were tossed about on jet skis, hanging on. And we're going to die. And that's exactly what the disciples were thinking. We are going to die. The wind and the waves are, are crushing them. And the wind and the waves as they're in the boat with Jesus remind us that even being in the boat with Jesus can be risky. There are no guarantees that life is going to be calm just because we got in the boat with Jesus. Alan and I worked on a houseboat camp for several summers up on the Sacramento Delta. And normally, Sacramento Delta is a great place for water skiing because normally it's very calm almost all the time. And each, at the end of each week, we uh, had a process where we would send the campers um, and the leaders out on what was called solo. And you would leave the houseboat and go out on the levee roads and spend about six hours by yourself in meditation and prayer and discovery and whatever. And so we were sent out onto these levee roads. And the winds came up unexpectedly, torrential winds that were so strong they pulled the anchors up of the houseboats. They could not stay tied to the shore or anchored into the muck that is below the Sacramento Delta. And we had kids out on the levees. And I'm walking out, it's so windy and the sand is blowing so hard, I literally have a towel wrapped around me like I'm a Bedouin out there trying to find the kids to get them back on the boat. What was ironic is it was much safer for us to not be tied to the shore but to be out into the channel 
because if we'd been tied to the shore and the anchor, it would have tipped the boats. So we had to push out away from shore and take that risk of being with one another in the middle of that channel. The dangers that the disciples are feeling are real. Dangers of perishing, dangers of drowning. But ironically, taking up the cross of Jesus turns out to be the safest thing that they can do. They go to their Lord and in their small faith, wake him up and ask and plead for Jesus to wake up. Now, if I had been on that boat, I don't think I would have been sleeping. But Jesus was out and they asked him and, and the literal translation says he rose up. It's the same word that they use when he is resurrected. Jesus rises up and he goes out and he tells the wind and the waves. He says the word peace, which meant silence. Be still, which that word actually is, translates to muzzled. It's Caesar Milan in Jesus' clothes. <laughs> he tells those winds and waves to be muzzled, to be silent, be at peace. And then he asks his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? What are they afraid of? Are they afraid of physically drowning, the, the water swamping them? Or are they afraid of being with Jesus? And I look at that and I'm in a boat with somebody who just told the wind and the waves to be still. Someone who clearly has control over the natural world. I'm not sure what I'm afraid of more. <laughs> and Mark says at the end, they were terrified. They were terrified. Still. Because Jesus had so much power and control. Was it riskier to be on the shore? Was it riskier to be in the boat? Was it riskier to be with Jesus? Leaving the crowd behind and following Jesus does not guarantee us, does not guarantee the church, a storm-free life. And we may find ourselves crying out to God, where are you? Wake up in those times where we feel like God is not there. And even when we make it through those storms, following Jesus may take us into encounters that we don't expect, into places where there is pain and suffering into the world, places where Jesus' power is most needed. Last night, I had the opportunity to worship with New Hope. Um, our friend, Chinetta Goodjoin, the pastor there, one of her dearest friends, Sharonda Coleman Singleton, was killed in that South Carolina shooting. Sharonda was a bridesmaid in Chinetta's wedding. She and Chinetta did their master's degree in speech pathology together. Both went on to get masters in divinity, and both went on to be ordained ministers. And so many of us from our presbytery came to be with Chinetta last night as their church had worship together. And at the last minute, I'm not kidding, last minute, three minutes before it was time for the community voice in their worship service, Chinetta leaned over to me and she said, hey, how do you feel about doing a community voice? tonight? <laughs> yeah, it just needs to be about, you know, the men of the church and their faith and blah, 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 and then you could tie it in and then, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> and so the Holy Spirit directed me to get up there and share with them. But the thing that I realized is that the poison of racism had stirred up a squall in South Carolina. There were massive waves happening there. And who knew that it would be such risky business to be in a Bible study on a Wednesday evening in a church. And I thought about that and I thought, and here we are last night worshiping with new hope. 
out in Southern California, but is that risky business? Is it risky business to be in worship with one another? Because there are storms out there. There are squalls out there. There are things that happen that cause people to do unspeakable things, unimaginable things, things that we don't plan for. Who's to say that there wasn't a gunman who wants to come into our sanctuary or New Hope Sanctuary? And so we bind ourselves together in faith. And I realized as I listened to the victims' families this week on the news and Sharonda's son herself as he was talking with his baseball team, that the call to and the call for forgiveness is that that calms the waters. Because I don't know in the same situation, would I be so willing to forgive or would I want to seek revenge instead? And if I followed that path for revenge, that would just keep the waters stirring. But instead, these victims' families, one after another, got up and said, we forgive you. We want to share Christ with you. We are going to pray for you. And that forgiveness was the power of Jesus going, we're going to calm the waters and we're going to offer forgiveness. Our experience together allows us to be in the storms of life but to also know the restoration of faith. Amen.